Good morning. Thank you for coming. Um, straight to the next slide. Right, so a few words about myself. As um, Sammy said, I'm, I'm the Nudge um, VP and I'm also a committer on Apache TK and I, I'm a user and contributor to um, quite a few open source solutions and I work for um, Digital Pebble, which is um, my consultancy based in Bristol, doing basically anything to do with text, uh, often on a large scale and it ranges from you know, web crawling to uh, natural language processing, data mining, you name it. Uh, so my talk is yeah pretty straightforward. Um, I'll give you first an overview of the project, just to give you an idea where we come from, uh, a bit of history and, and background. We'll see the main. Um, this one's a bit of a tongue twister. Uh, we'll see the main bits in in, in Nudge and uh, you know, the main concepts and and um, an overview of how it works, and then I'll describe Nudge 2x, which is our, our new branch, um, and then we'll uh, I'll give a few. Um, Ideas of the, the, the what you expect in the in the in the short term for um, for Nudge. Um, quick definition to start with: uh, so Nudge is a distributed framework for large-scale web crawling. Uh, that's a pretty lame definition because well, it doesn't have to be large-scale at all, uh, and that, that doesn't even have to be on the web. We can just crawl files, but um, le let's let's just assume that yeah, that that's what it does. Uh, it's been at it's been an, an Apache top-level project since uh, May 2010. And it's based on uh, on Hadoop, um, and the uh, the indexing and search is uh, is currently de currently delegated to um, to Solo. Um, bit of history: so the project was um, was started ten years ago by um, Doug Cutting and Mike Caffarella. I'm sure the names sound familiar. Uh, and it was yeah a, a, a sub project at uh, of Lucene at Apache, um, and and that is often uh, mentioned because. Well, it gave birth to, uh, to Hadoop. Um, I think Doug and Mike came across the, uh, the MapReduce paper by Google and decided to, uh, to implement it as part of Nudge. And now it's you know, that um, it, it became Hadoop. Um, similarly, the, uh, the parser, document parsing and, and MIME type detection in Nudge became another you know, spin-off, became Apache Tika, which is another very successful project. Um, so as I said earlier, we're now a top-level project. Um, and the, uh, the, the current versions are, so we have, that's what I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about today, so we have two versions in parallel, uh, and the current version for the branch, for the trunk, which is uh, 1x, is a 151, released last June, and uh, we've just released Nudge 2.1. Um, annoyingly, the green line is not really visible, so just imagine here, there is yeah, that <laughs> green line here, uh, dashed until here, it becomes solid with the first release uh, this summer of 2.0. And um, as you can see, the, we have for, for, the, the, for the, the trunk, for the, for the 1x branch, we have roughly two releases per year now. Uh, it used to be one every two or three years before that, before uh, 2009, but yeah, the, the release, releases are a little bit more frequent now, a little bit more um, a little bit more dense. And now we have yeah, 2.0 and well, the 2x branch as well. Um, you will probably notice that these two branches are not joined, so 2x is not, um, doesn't, doesn't come directly from, from 1x. It's we, we, um, the whole of Nudge has been pretty much rewritten from scratch for, for 2x with bits borrowed from, from, uh, from the trunk, of course, but can be seen as a completely separate development in a way. Um, Few words about the, uh, the the community. So we have six um, active committers and what well, PNC members at the moment. Uh, four within the last uh, year and a half. Um, we have yeah, quite constant streams of, of, of con new contributions and, and bug reports. Um, and the mailing list, yeah, pretty pretty steady. Uh, I mean, it's not the sort of traffic you would see on on Lucene or, or uh, Solar or Hadoop, but yeah, it, it has. Uh, uh, a niche audience, let's say, uh, but it's yeah, it's steady and there are there are you know, constant discussions going on. So Nudge is a very for well, ten years it is it's quite old, I, I suppose, for for software, for for an open source project. But yeah, Nudge is a very healthy project and it's going really well. Um, why do people use Nudge? So here, it's just a you know a few thoughts from from my own experience. It doesn't necessarily reflect any any. Um, commonly sort of accepted views within the community, but 
I suppose the um, people use Nudge for the, what I said, what I wrote as the, uh, the usual reasons, i.e. it's open source, there's a nice commercial you know, business-friendly license, it's been around for a while, there's a community. But I think the, um, mostly there are, there are two reasons why people use Nudge. One is that when it comes to creating on a large scale, it's, yeah, it's a pretty obvious choice. Uh, it's been you know, tried and tested. Uh, I'll give examples of, of that a bit later. Um, because it's based on, on, on Hadoop, well, you know, there are Hadoop skills around and, and you can, you know, there are, there are providers like, um, you can do Elastic MapReduce and so on, so it's, it's um, scalable and at the same time pretty, pretty sta standard um, in the sense that you, know, you don't need a very exotic, exotic configuration, it's just a Hadoop application. Um, and the other reason why people use it, not necessarily on because, of the, because it gives you scalability, is that it comes with a nice set of features which I will describe later. So, for instance, yeah, we, we index to solar. There is um, a page rank like implementation to to, um, to determine the importance of, of pages in the in the graph, and uh, a plugin mechanism that can be extended so that people can relatively easily implement their own, their own stuff. Um, not sure, however, it's not necessarily the best option if you want to do low latency. Um, crawling and, and indexing because it's it's a deep base. So all the all the, the, the mm, it's all you know, batch jobs. It's a, a, a sequence or sequences of of uh, batch jobs. So it's probably not the best tool for for low latency. Um, so you have no guarantee that the patch, uh, a page will be um, you know, if it appears on the web somewhere. Or, you know, you, you're not sure that it will be. Uh, you have no guarantee that it will be in your index within a given time frame. Um, and yeah, JavaScript or Ajax is not supported in, in, in Nudge. So again, if, you, if you're specifically interested in that, then there, there might be other resources for it. Um, typical use cases, well, why do people crawl the web? Well, very often it's to, to build search engines. It's for, for um, information retrieval. Um, sometimes in a, in a very generic way, sometimes with more with specific, you know, domains targeted or specific uh, processing done on the pages, so with you know, build on ve building vertical engines. Um, most of the time, the indexing is done with, with Solar, um, and people use that from you know, a single laptop to large clusters on, on, on EC2, for instance. But um, Nudge is not, not necessarily used for, uh, for building search engines. People use it to, to um, collect documents to do data mining, natural language processing or all sorts of you know, machine learning tasks. So it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not necessary for, for, for search. Um, and yeah, people you use um, Mahout or tools like UE, UEMA or Gate on, on, the, um, on the nudge output. Uh, of sometimes with Behemoth, which is one of our projects, which is um, about, yeah, it's a glueware for putting all these bits together. Um, Two examples to illustrate um, the, the use cases. <laughs> and we can't see them. Uh, right. I'll just tell you everything about them. You have to trust me, and you can check on the slides later. So on the, um, that's annoying. Uh, on the vertical axis here, we have the uh, verticality. So the further up you go, the more vertical the, uh, the application is. And on the uh, horizontal axis, you have the uh, scalability. So here we have one, uh, one use case. Um, Betterjobs.com, I mean, th these are two of our clients at Digital Pebble, um, and I'm mentioning it just because I, I happen to, to know them quite well. So here we have a single server used to um, crawl job portals, aggregate all the, the content, uh, with some bespoke work done on, on normalizing the structure, uh, structure and the content uh, for these um, job adverts, because the, uh, the way it's represented and, and normal and, and um, for the structure and everything depends from one portal to another. So part of the, uh, the, the parsing is about normalizing all this so that you know, we can then index it with Solar. And there are roughly a million pages. So it's, yeah, it's not at all a, a, a large crawl. So we are on this, this side of the, the graph, quite vertical, low scale. Most applications will be somewhere you know, in between these two lines. Um, generally, the, 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 the larger you you go on, on scale, the, the more generic your, your crawl tends to be. Uh, and on this, uh, this, on this side here, we have uh, similarpages.com, which is a um, um, completely different application. There is no search involved. Um, as the 
name of, of the site suggests, it's about finding similarities between um, web pages. And for these guys, we had uh, a 400 node cluster on, on Amazon EC2. Yep, that's large bills. Uh, and we had 3 billion pages fetched and passed, and, and in total, 10, more than 10 billion pages in the, in the, um, in, in the crawl DB. Um, and as I said, yeah, no indexing or, or search involved. And yeah, most of the time, yeah, most crawls are somewhere, somewhere in between these two, uh, often more on these ends, <laughs> uh, as we'll see later. Um, right, so now, what are the main um, steps in Nudge? How does it work? Um, as, I, as I said, it's uh, a sequence of batch operations. So it's you know, think, map, reduce, jobs. Um, and, and these steps are the same for Nudge 1 and Nudge 2. Um, I, I will tell you a little bit more in, in, in the next slide, um, and which is here, and you can't see really well. So we st it starts from a, a seed list, so we, we, you define what, you know, what, what the starting points for, for um, the crawl are. And then you populate the crawl DB. So the crawl DB is, is the, uh, the structure. That's for um, um, specific to 1x. Um, is where we store the information about the crawl, you know, what URLs we have found, um, their weight, uh, their status, whether it's been you know, successfully fetched and passed, or whether it's a redirection and so on. And then the, uh, we have quite a few iterations of, of um, what's called segments. So we, we generate the, uh, first we generate um, a fetch list. So we say, okay, let's go through the, uh, the crawl DB. What do we want to get next? So then we actually do the actual fetching of, of trying to get the content for these pages. We pass the, um, the, uh, the content. So we, we extract the text and metadata. And then we, we update the crawl DB. So we've discovered, at this stage, we've discovered new pages. We just enrich the, uh, the crawl DB with our new the things we've, we've just discovered and, and update the, the status for the ones we already knew, and so on. And then you, we, just, we just repeat these, these, um, these steps of, of uh, iterations of, um, of uh, generating, fetching, passing, updating. Um, you can then uh, generate what's called a, a link DB. So it's just um, a very simple structure which, which um, maps the uh, in links with the, uh, the, the target URLs. And you use all this stuff, so the crawl DB, the content of the segment, and possibly the link DB, if you want to index, and you send that to Solar. Um, pretty straightforward. Another way of looking at it, and that's a slide that I nicked from um, my friend Andrei Bieretsky, um, is that, okay, talking about the, the iterations and so on, so each cloud here is an iteration. So we start from the seeds, we do one round, so I equal one, we get more, more, more pages and link between the pages and then another round and so on. You'll notice that, so we, we, um, you know, we get the relationships between the, the, the pages. Not all um, URLs discovered are, are interesting, so we have ways of controlling the way the, um, the, the frontiers are, are expanded. Um, and and yeah, I'll describe later how to, how to do that. So uh, I mentioned that um, one, of the, uh, one of the reasons people use Nudge is that it comes with um, a nice set of features, uh, and everything is, it, well, pretty much everything is, is extensible with, with Nudge. Uh, it's based on um, a, a plugin framework, I think, taken from Eclipse. Um, so most things are, you, know, you can write your own plugins, and these plugins will implement the following endpoints. So these are you know, the basic functionalities, and you can you can write your own. Um, so yeah, protocol, you know, pretty obvious. HTTP, FTP, FTP, HTTPS, wha and whatnot. Um, parser. So here um, it means what I call primary parser. So something which will take a binary document, extract the text and metadata, and this can be extended. Uh, then there is the uh, the pass filters, which which is a bit different. It, it gets a structured representation of a document, and it will try and extract you know, things that you know, can then be um, put in, in, the, in, in, the, in the field for the indexing. And then the, we have things that are used in, in various places in the code, so scoring filter um, and the URL filters, which are what I, I described in the previous slide, you know, ways of controlling the way you expand your, your graph. And finally, the indexing filter, so you can, you can define you know, what fields you want to, uh, to have in your solar index. Um, the features, well, the, the main one, of course, 
when it comes to, to crawling is the, the, the fetcher. Um, and one, so it's yeah, multi-threaded and, and so on. Um, one very important aspect with, with, with the, the fetching in, in Nudge that we have a very polite fetcher. Uh, so it follows robot.txt. Uh, and, and the way it works is that it groups the, um, the URLs. You remember that in, in that slide earlier with the, um, the generation step when we, we just generate the fetch list? Well, we, we group the uh, URLs per host name, domain, or IP, depending on, on what you want, so that we, we are sure that during the fetching, there'll be only one um, mapper that will be in charge of, of fetching the URLs for a given, say, host name, um, so that we can control uh, the, the politeness for you know, how frequently we will hit the, uh, the, the targets. And you can, you can, of course, limit the number of URLs per round of fetching as well to make sure you have a good dis distribution of URLs in your fetch list uh, and that you can you know, make the most of the, uh, the multi-threading. Um, so yeah, the, the default values in Nudge are, are polite. It can be more made more aggressive. Um, but uh, it, yeah, it, it comes often on the mailing list. People you know, to ask you know, how, how um, efficient Nudge is and, and the, uh, the efficiency of the fetching. And you know, there, there's, there's no... Um, you know, there's no standard answer to that. It just depends on the, on the distribution of URLs. It depends on you know, how many domains you're targeting and so on. Uh, from my experience in, 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 in crawling on, on a reasonably large scale, it's not advisable to be, um, to be too aggressive because otherwise you spend your time sort of answering furious emails from webmasters and so on. And you know, it's not a good idea and, and not, not a nice thing to do anyway. Um, Features, yeah, the, the crawl strategy. So by default, um, nudge goes breadth first, but ca that can be changed with the, uh, the scoring plugins, and you can go depth first. You can you can determine how to uh, prioritize the um, you know, the URLs and, and what will be fetched next, um, which is related to the my next point, the scoring. So we have th there are two aspects in the scoring. One is you know, giving a priority to URLs so that you know, you'll define what, what what you want to get next, and the other one is which is closely related, um, is to determine the importance of documents, their weights, so that you can use that to, um, to boost the, uh, the search results. Um, so there are two scoring mechanisms in, in, in Nudge, the um, OPIC, which is a pretty straightforward forward one, which is used by default, and one which is like, like page rank, it's just called link rank for some reason. Um, and yeah, I have a choice of both. Um, yeah, protocols I mentioned earlier. Um, scheduling, so it's Basically, how often do you want to try to and revisit a new a new document? Uh, you can specify, say, number a set number of, uh, of days, which is the, you know, the default scheduling. There's also a module for the, called the um, adaptive scheduling, so it will go and try and see how frequently a page tends to um, to be modified, and then from from that determine you know, the optimal fetch time for, for that page. Um, the URL fil filters, we have all sorts of um, implementations of and, and for um, filtering the pages. So, you know, standard regular expression, final, final state automata, which are much faster. Um, you can filter by top level domain, prefix, suffix. So, there's a whole toolbox of, of things you can use to, uh, to control your, um, the expansion of the, of the crawl. Um, and, yeah, similarly, URL normalizers. Basically, they are, it's just a way of making sure that you know, small variants in the URLs are, are just treated with a, a standard form. Um, again, it's a way of making the, uh, the crawl more efficient um, and, and also avoid uh, duplicates. Um, so the, the, the parsing is done um, partly with um, Apache Tika, so, uh, which uh, I mentioned earlier. So we have a whole lot of formats supported automatically straight out of the box because we, we, we use Tika. I think there is a, um, or there was a talk on Tika earlier. Um, but we also have some legacy parsers that, that are still hanging around and, and that were uh, pre-Tika. Uh, we also have quite a few um, other plugins uh, to do specific stuff like language identification, which I think is based on Tika as well, or uh, to extract various sort of uh, metadata or meta tags from um, HTML pages, and as I said, yeah, the indexing is um, done with uh, with Solar. So we have a bespoke schema in in uh, in Nudge that you can just get and paste, put in in Solar, and 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 use it directly. Uh, I'll skip this. Uh, you can 
have a look at that. When I, uh, the slides will be um, published, you can have a look at that if you're really desperate. It's just <laughs> the data structures for, for in, in 1x. So, yeah, with 1x, everything is based on the, the standard Hadoop um, data structures, so the sequence files and the map files. Uh, and that just yeah, explains what, what is in there. I'll just skip this. Because um, there are quite a few things I want to tell you about, uh, mostly Nudge 2x, which, um, as I said, um, it's been released uh, this summer, uh, and there's been been working on that for um, for I think a couple of years before. Um, it's pretty similar to to 1x in a way, uh, in the sense that it still map reduce jobs, still uses Tika for parsing. We still you know, send the uh, the documents to Solar for indexing. Um, yeah, the steps are are very pre pretty similar. It's always. Mm fetch, pass, update, generate, and so on. But the, uh, the main change is that we, we moved from the, um, the, the, the Hadoop-based data structures I've just mentioned to um, a table-based architecture. Uh, and you know, there, there's been quite a few uh, NoSQL projects in the last couple of years, and so we have various options for, um, for that. Uh, but instead of deciding on, you know, being being hardwired to a specific tool like HBase or Cassandra or whatever, we um, we have an abstraction on on top of the storage which is done by um, a new project at uh, Apache called Gora. So there will be before I forget there will be a talk about Gora after the break somewhere else. So yeah, could be uh, interesting to go and have a look if you're interested. Just a few words on 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 uh, on, on Gora. So. Um, it's um, yeah, it's a top-level project at Apache, and it's basically an ORM for NoSQL databases. Um, but it doesn't do only NoSQL. It does only, you, there is also um, um, an implementation for uh, to connect it to uh, SQL, uh, and also some file-based storage with um, the, um, using Avro. Uh, the latest version is 0.2.1, released in August. And it comes currently with the, the following um, data store implementation. So there is Accumulo, Cassandra, HBase, Avro, used for, um, for the file-based storage, DynamoDB, which I think is about to be, uh, to be released, and, as I mentioned earlier, SQL. Um, we use Apache Avro for serializing um, for to the, um, the, the data stores. Uh, and we have backend-specific mappings to, to, to map from, the, uh, you know, how from the, the object serialized with Avro to the actual data stores. Quick example of this, so this is the, the schema. Um, this is an example of in, in Nudge2x of how we represent a web page. So this is a, an Avro schema, so we define the uh, various fields like status, fetch time, and so on. Uh, and then this is used to generate the Java code uh, that is used by, by Gora. Um, so this is, you know, regardless of the backend you, you decide to use, whether you want to go for uh, HBase or Cassandra, you have just one, one schema. Um, what changes, though, is the mapping file, where you define, so I think this is taken from the, um, the HBase one uh, in, in Nudge. So you have one uh, mapping file per backend that you want to use. So this is the one for HBase. So it says basically, uh, it takes the, the fields we've we've seen just previously in the uh, in the schema and says, okay, put that in this family with a qualifier and so on. So you um, yeah, you define how you want to store things, and and this can be you know this can be modified if necessary. Um, so Goa gives us um, the following operations: so the the standard get put deletes with the with the keys. Uh, we can run queries as well, uh, and I suppose the uh, the nature of the, the queries depends from from the backend, from, from backend to backend. Um, it quite well, importantly for us, for for Nudge, uh, it gives us wrappers um, for um, to run with with MapReduce. So we have these um, things like the Gora Mapper Reducer that we use directly in, in Nudge, uh, and that sort of that hides completely the uh, the intricacies of the uh, the various backends, so um, that's what we uh, we use. And yes, it means you can run uh, your your MapReduce codes on a, a MySQL database, for instance. Um, so in in Nudge, we um, we use we have the the, the schema I, I mentioned earlier. Um, so it, it's uh, it's already there. The code is pre-generated. We have 
uh, some default mapping files for the various backends that can be modified. Um, but the, um, in Nudge 2x, there is no binary distribution. There's only the, a source distribution because you need to uh, rebuild uh, to get the right dependencies, the right Gora dependencies to get the, uh, the specific backends and so on. Uh, more details on, on how to use it on the Nudge 2 tutorial. Um, so what are the advantages of, of, of using Gora uh, for, for Nudge? Well, we still have the uh, a distributed storage, just like we did with, with on 1x and, and the, um, the, the Hadoop c um, structures, um, still replicated and so on. Um, but we have one big table instead of having uh, a little bit in the LinkedIn, most of the stuff in the core DB and, and all these various segments, it's all in one big table. Um, and it's, it simplifies the, the logic in Nudge. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, and also makes the, the code more efficient. Um, imagine you have, you've done a bit of crawling, uh, you have, say, a billion URLs in your CrawlDB, all very nice. You generate a new, a new fetch list and you fetch, say, a million pages. You want to update your CrawlDB with this million pages. Well, the code that does the um, update and merging, uh, the MapReduce code, basically reads the entire CrawlDB. So you read, you deserialize a billion entries plus your million you've just fetched. You read all this, you merge on the reduce step, reduce step, and you write a billion pages. So as, your, as the crawl gets bigger and bigger, this update step takes longer and longer. Um, Gora will, will you know, possibly, because we have you know, more, more options um, when it comes to uh, um, you know, the atomic operations, so on. We, yeah, we have more options for, for that. Uh, doesn't mean it's necessarily implemented yet, but it might be. Um, yeah. We need, yeah, as I said, we don't need necessarily need to read the entire structure as we do now. So it will, might be more efficient in the long term. Don't have any, we haven't done any benchmarks, but this will come, I'm sure. And, and Gora is still you know, early days. Uh, there's still a lot of work being done on it. Um, another advantage is that hopefully it will make it easier to, uh, to interact with um, other resources in the sense that um, if you have a piece of code that you know, wants to, to extract stuff from, from Nudge, then you should be able to do that just by using Goro in the schema. Um, a few drawbacks there. Uh, yeah, there are more things to install and configure. So if you need to, to want, yeah, you want to use Nudge too, then yeah, you need to install HBase as well, Zookeeper, whatnot. Um, uh, it's not as stable as Nudge 1x, but that's you know, fair enough. Nudge 1 has been around for 10 years now, so it's had plenty of time to be stable. Um, and in a way, yeah, it can be seen good or a bad thing. Yeah, we, there is a reliance on, on Gora, so, um, which, which will be a good thing when Gora take, um, t takes up. Um, things in progress for, um, work in progress for 2x. Well, we have, there's quite a bit of work to do in, in, on the Gora side with, for um, stabilizing some of the, uh, the backends. Um, they're not all necessarily at the same level um, and not necessarily all reliable in the same way. Um, I know that people use Nudge 2 with um, Edge Base and with, with Gora in production, and it, uh, I think you know, it's fairly, uh, fairly stable. I wouldn't trust the, the, the SQL backend that much, but um, yeah, there, there will be work done on, on this, I expect. Also, because as I said in, my, in my, one of my few, um, first um, slides, we have the, the development's been, you know, it's, it was written pretty much from scratch and it, you know, bits have been borrowed from 1x, but it's the, the development has been done pretty much in parallel. Uh, so we have features in 1x that we don't have in 2, like the, uh, the um, link page rank equivalent, uh, but we don't have that in, in 2x. Uh, at the opposite, we have um, we, we can index with Elasticsearch with um, the branch two, but not yet with the branch one. So all this will you know, progressively, I uh, assume, will be um, will be um, will be sorted. And there are also improvements to do on them, as I mentioned, with, with Gora. So things like the um, being able to uh, filter scans um, on, on the backend side, uh, which will make things more more efficient. Um, I expect one, two, and, and well, one and two to be in parallel for um, for quite some time, uh, probably with more frequent releases for 2x because well there are, there are more things happening to it. Um, 
a few functionalities coming probably in the, in the, um, in the short term. Some of them, I know some of them are being you know, currently worked on. Um, support for solar clouds. At the moment, the, um, it's still the old-fashioned uh, solar, um, where we, we just send a document to, to a single solar instance. Uh, I think the, the idea is to uh, leverage the um, capabilities of solar cloud and, and, and do things in a, in a slightly better way and, and send the documents directly to the, um, the right shards and so on. Um, sitemap, which is something that's been on um, discuss discussed for quite some time for um, with Nudge. Um, we'll probably use the um, the code from um, Crawler Commons, which is a little project, little side project we have. I'll mention it in a minute. Um, do things like canonical tags, um, and yeah, as I said, add things like Elasticsearch to One uh, X, um, possibly. Doing the um, having pluggable indexes at the moment, we have just the um, you know, the code for Solar, and if you want to write say an index with Elasticsearch, you need to piggyback the Solar code, which is yeah, not ideal. Uh, I'd rather have um, in the same way as we have plugins for doing all sorts of things. Um, I'd like to see um, pluggable indexes. You can just implement your own plugin and you know, use the, the standard commands for for the um, for the indexing. Um, more delegation. Um, we've done quite a lot of that in recent years. Uh, those of you who um, have been following Nudge for, for, uh, for a bit will probably remember that we used to have our own indices, listen indices, uh, with MapReduce uh, and managed with Nudge, and also the search was done with, with Nudge and so on. So we got rid of all this uh, and just delegated to Solar. So that was a, a, a massive improvement to the code, uh, also because well, because you don't have to play catch up with the, the functionalities developed in Solar, and also, well, it makes sense. And it had the, the code for Nurture shrunk by, I think, pretty, almost 50%. So that, that was massive. Same with Tika. We used to have our own parsers and so on, which just delegate part of the, 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 the parsing to Tika and leverage all the work being done there. Uh, so we'll, I think we'll, 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 keep do, uh, we'll, we'll keep doing more of the same. Um, I mentioned Crawler Commons earlier, so this is where it lives. Um, it currently does things like, um, well, it has an implementation of a fetcher, um, the um, you know, robots passing and so on. At the moment, we, we're not using this code yet, but the idea is that, is that all the bits that can be reused by other crawlers will be put in, in uh, crawler commons, and as the name suggests, uh, and then we'll just use that directly in Nudge, again, to make the code uh, well, better and, 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 um, and, and um, smaller and easier to maintain. Um, also, we have, I mentioned that uh, page rank like um, library that we, um, what, uh, that we have. Um, now we have these uh, wonderful graph libraries like Apache Giraffe. And it will make sense, I think, to uh, delegate the computation of the, uh, the, the page rank scores to, um, to Giraffe. Uh, it will, again, less good to maintain. Um, and, and it will probably be uh, yeah, a lot more efficient as well. Um, so you can find out more, of course, on the, on the project web page, um, the wiki, which is relatively up to date. Uh, as usual, the mailing list. There is no book on Nutch. Um, there is a very good chapter in Tom White's book on, on, on Hadoop, though, written by Andrzej Biawetsky, which, uh, which is about 1x, of course, not, not uh, Nutch 2. Um, and yes, uh, as I said, if you're Nudge is, is just a Hadoop, uh, a Hadoop um, application. So if you if you if you want to really understand how Nudge works, a good understanding of Hadoop is, is crucial anyway. Um, and yeah, and if you need support, consulting, training, there is a, a page listing um, people who can help you with that. Any questions? Uh, out of uh, data like B1 billion documents, what are potential b bottlenecks have you seen in this infrastructure? Which what I'm, not sure, I'm not sure I got the question. Uh, uh, sorry. If I would uh, really want to crawl a lot of data, like 1 billion documents, right? So really big data set. Yeah. What are potential bottlenecks you would imagine where I should look at? So is it you DNS mean, service, uh, indexing pipeline, or anything configuration in... Uh, 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 you, you mean documents on, on the web? Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the, usually the, um, as I mentioned, the, uh, well, it's not really a bottleneck, but the, there are two things. Um, the, the fetching I itself takes a bit of time, but that's 
uh, it's not so much due to the um, the way Nudge is implemented. It's it's the fact that you want to be polite. You want to make sure that you don't send you know, 400 requests to a single server in within two seconds or something. Um, but there are ways of, of making sure that you will distribute your fetch list um, as much as possible. Um, but so yeah, that, that's the step that, and it's it's fair enough for a crawler to have the f you know the fetching step taking taking a bit of time. The other one, the other bottleneck, well, it's not really a bottleneck. There, there are ways around it. Um, is that as your your crawl DB gets larger and larger, the generation step. So when you have to go through all the entries in the crawl DB and determine which is the one to be you know, fetched in, in the next next slot, as well as the updating step, when you just merge the existing, well, the, the results you've just got from a, from a round of fetching into the uh, the crawl DB, um, well, this tends t tends to grow you know, proportionally to the size of the crawl DB. Uh, so this is probably, but there are ways around it. You can you can generate um, multiple segments in one go um, and fetch past them one after the other, or in parallel, possibly. Uh, and then update everything in in in, in one big um, step, uh, which is a way of um, saving a bit of time. But uh, but this becomes an issue just when you when you get to a, you know, quite, quite a substantial size. Uh, most people use Nudge uh, on on a very small scale, uh, and most people use Nudge too with uh, MySQL because they are I suppose that's what they are familiar with. Um, and um, yeah, so you get, you know, most people have just you know, nudge running on a laptop, so you're not going to hit any of, of uh, these issues you know, until you have substantial um, um, set of, uh, of machines, a substantial um, cluster. Does that answer your, your question? Yeah. Okay. You really need the, um, uh, the, the newest articles uh, to be available as soon as possible in a, mm -hmm. a solar index. Is there any way to circumvent that or? Uh is it just bad luck? Um, well, it depends what, what you find acceptable as a, a, a as a gap, uh, a, as a latency. Within, uh, within minutes. Within um, minutes. I suppose th 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 there might be other tools that would be probably um, you know, a, a better better fit for that. Um, although, depending depending on how large your 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 site is, you would be able to probably to. Uh, Recrawl the whole thing with it within a few minutes. Um, so um, yeah, especially it probably depends on, on on the side of your size of your your side. But again, you might be better off trying something different. Um, um, yeah. It's about uh, two million pages on our website. Uh. Pages. Yeah. So within minutes, again, you you have no guarantee that the um, say the um, Fetch or parser will, and update and so on will will finish. So uh, yeah, probably not. It's, it's one of the cases why uh, where I mentioned earlier that you know, low latency probably not the best tool. Um. In comparison with um, the crawler Heretrix, is there uh, an advantage to use Nudge or? Um, it's an inter interesting question. I'd love to know the answer. Uh, I've never used Heretrix, uh, okay. but yeah, if you have any. Uh, Experience of this, yeah, I'd be a, uh, I'd be uh, glad to hear about it. No, I don't, re I don't. To be honest, no, I, I haven't used Heretrix. Um, okay. We can talk up yeah. after. Uh, yeah. I, I don't really know about how Heretrix, um, how to configure it and everything, how it works. If you want to use it on the cluster, uh, I, I would think that Nudge, because it's based on you know, standard, standard Hadoop. Uh, is you just need to have a, a Hadoop cluster up and running, and then bang, you, you send your stuff. So, but I don't really know. Yeah, I would be interested to, to hear about uh, your your thoughts about Heretrix as well. Any other questions? Uh, do we need to keep uh, segments if we uh, send data, for example, to the Solar Index? Um, do we need them? Probably not. Um, no. No, you, you probably uh, you, you can you can delete your your segments if you uh, um, once you, you've indexed with with Solar. Uh, the, the in the past, I mentioned that we, we used to have the indices uh, managed by Nudge and the search done by Nudge. The reason why the the segments were kept then was when people wanted to do, um, cache the, uh, the the documents so that you could hit the cache and get the binary uh, representation of the document. Now, um, you know, with the, the, the search being done by Solar, no, you, you wouldn't need the, the segments anymore. 
Um, so no, you can delete them. <laughs> Uh, one more. Uh, sure. We don't need the segments uh, if we want to refetch some uh, pages. No, because the segments contain only the um, the binary content, uh, well, the, the, the text as well. But once you've indexed, I mean, the the, the textual content is you know, sent to Solar. Um, uh, no, because then you all the information, which is vital for um, you know about a given URL. For, for fetching and everything, for, for calling are still stored in um, in the crawl DB. So that, that's persistent. So you know, you know when to fetch it next, you know what the, the previous status was, you know how many failures you had since you last tried to get it successfully and when you should give up really for it. Um, so no you, you don't need to you don't necessarily need to keep the segments. With notch two it's it's well different because the um, everything will be on the on, on the table so you, you can you know, Suppose you, you, you'd have the option to delete uh, the, uh, the the content if you wanted to, just to save space. But um, yeah, segments I mean, make make sense for for one X because also because you um, when you want when you want to um, fetch well then parse and, and update and everything, you have to go through your your MapReduce code has to go through only through the information in the segment. Um, so it's, it makes it quite nice and fast. Um, but uh, there are uh, the opposite. You also have issues with um, if you have multiple segments and, and you have uh, um, one document or one URL uh, found in multiple segments, then you need to work out which is the, uh, the latest version and so on. So, but this, that this won't be an issue anymore with um, Nudge 2. Any more? Well, earlier you said... Uh that you categorize the URLs by domain and house not to bombard the site. That's right. So how do you, is this configurable? Is there a magic number you don't, you, you put in your, how often to hit and fetch the pages? Or is it dynamic or how does it? No, the, 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 there are two things. One is the, uh, for politeness, yeah, we want to make sure that there's only one machine um, f f fetching the um, you know, pages for a given, say, host. Um, then how, how often to, um, yeah, then you define how um, the sort of gap you want between two calls to a sing single, ser single server, so that's you know, a parameter that you specify. Uh, again, the default values are pretty polite. Um, and then how, um, how frequently you want to refetch a page is um, yeah, it's a different parameter. So I think by default it's um, 30 days before you will try, if you, if you get something, it will try and, and get it again to refresh it with a, within the next 30 days. But that's, yeah, that's not the same as uh, grouping by, um, uh, for the fetch list. Uh, it's, more, uh, it's more scheduling more than politeness. Um. And that's uh, domain specific, like it's configurable for each and different? Or it's um, good? good question. Um, the, uh, for the scheduling, you mean? Um, well, it depends on, uh, let me just, no, it's too far. <laughs> uh, there are basically yeah, just these two options. One is uh, you, you have a set value, which you can, uh, which will be for all the um, you know, all the URLs in, in the core DB. There is also the adaptive scheduler, which is looks at how frequently a page has changed. So that will be then per page. We'll track the changes for this page. Uh, and I think, I'm not entirely sure. I think you can specify it from the um, for each seed, and you can pass it in. So okay, I want to refresh this seed, and also all the things found from this seed um, at you know, so many days or, or hours or, or whatever. Um, great. Thank you very much.